someday, 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 I'm going where Jesus is. Someday, 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 I'm going where Jesus is. Someday. Caught up to meet him, caught up to meet him, joy and happiness will be mine, oh, peace and joy forevermore, I'll be caught up to meet him in the air, oh, someday, 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 I'm going where Jesus is, someday. I'll be caught up, caught up to meet him, caught up to meet him, joy and happiness will be mine, oh, peace and joy forevermore, I'll be caught up to meet him in the end, oh, someday, 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 I'm going where Jesus lives, someday, someday. Someday, someday, I'm going where Jesus is. Someday, 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 I'm going where Jesus is. I'll be caught up to meet him in the air. Oh, I'll be caught up to meet him, caught up to meet him. Joy and happiness will be mine. Caught up to meet him, caught up to meet him, joy and happiness will be mine, peace and joy forevermore, caught up to meet him in the air. Continue through the hands of our pastor, Bishop Charles we L. Smith. Hallelujah. Seek him by saying, praise the Lord. This time we're going to stand for prayer. We ask everyone to sit in the sanctuary to stand and let us get our minds upon the Lord and let us try to concentrate upon Him being in the house of God, being with one another. And let us raise our hands as we pray in to the God of heaven. Father God, I thank you for another day that you have given unto us to worship and to magnify your name. I thank you for the healing power that is in the name of Jesus. We see the saints back in service again. Hallelujah. 
We see the ones that have been sick glorifying God and standing up and telling of his goodness or being in our presence telling us of his goodness. Thank you for healing them. Thank you for bringing them back to Zion one more time. I pray, Lord God, that you will bless our service today and bless your servant as I stand before the people. Anoint us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Remember those who are bereaved and those who have lost loved ones recently. I pray for them that you will comfort them in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless us as we preach your word today. Hallelujah. Tear down every stronghold that Satan has built up against the people of God. And give us joy and give us happiness and give us a praise in our heart for the great God of heaven. And let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may remain standing as we get ready or prepare to read our scripture reading for today. It is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 through 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 through 15. When you have it, say amen. Let us all read together. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food. Multiply your seed sown, increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes us to thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whilst by the experience of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and to all men and by their prayer for you which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Our scripture verse, we want to read it one more time, is Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 15. And it says, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Amen. Now, what Paul is writing about there, I want to explain that a little bit uh, before we go to the other part of the message. Paul was saying that he really believed that the unspeakable gift was God's amazing grace. Amen. He believed that it came through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who was full of grace and truth. It was given to us, amen, as a favor from God. Hallelujah. We did not earn it. We did not do anything to get it. Hallelujah. But because he loved us and because he wanted us to be saved, First of all, he gave us Jesus Christ, who was his son, and he was full of grace and mercy and truth. Hallelujah. Then after he gave us his grace, then he just 
kept on giving us more grace all the time. Hallelujah. We didn't just get enough grace to get saved. Hallelujah. He said, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. But he just keeps on giving us his grace. Hallelujah. Every day that we are able to get up clothed in our right mind with the activity of our limbs, it is because of the grace of God. Hallelujah. For if his grace was not there, we would not have all of these benefits. Hallelujah. And we thank him for giving us his abundant grace. Hallelujah. Grace, grace, God's grace. Hallelujah. Grace that is greater than all of our sin. Hallelujah. In our scripture text, Paul is telling them about the grace of God. He's telling them that the grace of God is, hallelujah, indescribable. It's incomparable. It's inestimable. Hallelujah. There is no way to have words. If I would ask you all today, how do you feel, hallelujah, because of the grace of God, you'd start shouting, hallelujah. I believe you would. Because <laughs> he said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. Hallelujah. 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 We all did bad things. Hallelujah. Even me. <laughs> we all did things that offended God, but he looked beyond our faults and he saw our need. Hallelujah. He said in the book of Romans, Hallelujah. Where sin doth abound, grace, grace did much more abound. The sin was there, but grace was there. Mercy was there. Mercy rejoiced against sin and said it's wrong and said, Lord, please don't punish them for what they have done. But grace stepped up and said, don't worry, Lord, because I'll save them through your grace. Hallelujah. Aren't you all glad that you got it? I know I am. Hallelujah. The Bible said in Ephesians 2, 5, and 6, even when we were dead in sin, hath he quickened us together with Christ. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. He has raised us up together with him and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Lord, I'm not where I used to be, but still, I'm not where I want to be. Hallelujah. But you brought me out of the miry clay. You put my feet on the rock to stay. You put joy in my soul today. A song of your praises. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God for his Amazing grace. Hallelujah. In our text, Paul is talking to the church in Corinth. Hallelujah. 
He wanted to take an offering to Jerusalem for the saints that were there that had fell on poverty. Hallelujah. And what he was asking them to do was to share the blessings that God has given you with someone else who is less fortunate than you are. Amen. Now, if you believe in that philosophy, you will give to people you know need help. Not looking for anything in return, but hallelujah, the favor and the grace of God. Hallelujah. Is that all right, church? And he said to them that they needed to loosen up a little bit on their pocketbook. <laughs> Blessed quietness, holy quietness in the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he gave them some principles for uh, Christian giving. Hallelujah. And we're going to look first of all in for point number one in Second. Corinthians 9, 8, 9 through 14, and these are the principles for giving. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, For ye know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that through, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. And though, and that ye through poverty were made rich. Now he's not talking about how many bucks you got or how big a bank account you got. He's talking about the riches, the spiritual riches that he has given to us. Hallelujah. Every day, he provides for our spiritual need. We may be low on food, but we're not low on the word. Hallelujah. We might have to wait until payday to buy a certain thing, but he feeds us daily with the word of God. Hallelujah. And for our sakes, Jesus, hallelujah, who was rich, and everything became poor so that we might be rich in spiritual things. He tore down every stronghold that was holding back our blessing. He took out of the way the things that could stop us from going to heaven. Hallelujah. He justified us. He redeemed us. He brought us back in a right relationship with God. He could have set up in heaven and said, let them die because they're not doing right anyway. But God so loved the world. I said he loved the world. He loved you. He loved me. He loved our family. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him would not perish. But have everlasting life. Hallelujah. You may not have everything that. Hallelujah. Rich people have. But we have Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have the Lord. You are blessed today. You are highly favored today. You got something that the world don't have. I heard them talking about peace in the Sunday school today. You have the peace of God. And you have peace with God. Hallelujah. God has given you great and me great spiritual riches. 
Hallelujah. In verse 10 he said, Herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Hallelujah. He was teaching them benevolence and what it means to give to other people who cannot help themselves and what it means to give especially to those who have been responsible for your salvation. Hallelujah. The mother church in Jerusalem needed help. Hallelujah. Paul wants to give them help from the other churches that have been founded through the ministry that began in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 11. He said, Now therefore perform the doing of it. For there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye had. He was asking them, give us an offering to give to the mother church that is in Jerusalem. And this church was a rich church. And they had prophet, promised Paul, a year before that time, that they were going to get an offering together and give it in Jerusalem. Now he's telling them it is time. It is time for you to take your natural substance and bless somebody else who does not have what you have, who do not have the richness of his blessing, who do not have his powerful, amazing grace. Hallelujah. For if there first be a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. Hallelujah. God never requires of us to give money that we don't have. God never requires of us to take money, hallelujah, and do something with it when we don't even have enough to pay for our food and our medicine. Hallelujah. But he's saying, if God has been good to you, if God has blessed you, if God has given you a couple or three extra nickels to give to somebody, bless them. Bless them with those nickels and I will return it back to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know why this is in the message. I know why it's in there too. Because we have a good church that gives good tithes and offerings into the church. I'm not talking about this to get more money, but I'm talking about something that God looks at as far as we are concerned. Amen. And whoever gives something to someone who is in need lendeth to the Lord. Hallelujah. And God never lets you do more for other people than what he does for you. Now, I don't know whether you tried this yet, but, but it really works. It really works. When God sees somebody who is poor and needy and we reach out to help them, God repays us back. Hallelujah. I was in a meeting one time preaching at a certain church, hallelujah, and the Lord spoke to me while I was preaching and said when they have an offering, when that widow woman sitting over there comes by, get put a piece of money in her hand, hallelujah. 
Well, this is old. <laughs> and so I only had enough to get my lunch for the next week, and I had to have gas for the next week. But he said, put something in her hand. Hallelujah. So I looked in my pocket, I had $35, and that's all I had. So I started to bargain it with the Lord a little bit. <laughs> now, Lord, you know how much is in my pocket. And Lord, you know I got to go to work next week. And Lord, you know I packed my own lunch. Hallelujah. And the Lord said subtly in my ear, give her a piece of money. Okay, Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. So when she came around, I folded up the $35 in my hand, and I said, praise the Lord, Mother. How are you today? She said, fine. I put it in her hand. She squeezed her hand up over the money and walked away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But out of that $35, I got two double turns that week. <laughs> true story, true story. I got two extra turns that week, and all of my food and all of my provision that I needed for that week was taken care of. Hallelujah. And I said something to the Lord. I said, Lord, help me to reach out by faith and believe your word. Help me to hear your voice in my ears. I know once it gets in your hand, you want to hold it and not give it to anybody else. But the more we give, the more we receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul was telling them, if you help Jerusalem, if you help the mother church, God will give it back to you. If you see somebody in need and you give them something that you really feel, I need this more than them, God will give it back to you. Hallelujah. 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 We said, if there first be a willing mind, it is accepted according to what a man hath, not according to what he hath not. For I mean not that other men be eased and ye be burdened, but by equality, that now at this time, your abundance, you have a lot, may be a supply for their want and their abundance also may be a supply for your one, that ye may have equality. Now what he's talking about, you're giving them natural money, but they are giving you their prayers, and they are giving you spiritual things in return for what you have given unto them. In other words, both people are benefiting. The giver is benefiting, and the receiver is benefiting. Hallelujah. You can't lose. <laughs> you will never lose anything trying to help somebody else. I guarantee it. Hallelujah. In chapter 9, he said, for touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write unto you. For I know the forwardness of your mind, that which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Asia, 
was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. Hallelujah. He was talking about a poor church. Hmm. A church that was not able to give anything because they needed everything for themselves. But do you know what Macedonia did? They took up an offering anyway, gave it to Paul, and said, take it and give it to the poor saints that are in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. And they were all happy because they got it. And they were happy because the Lord had blessed them to bless somebody else. Hallelujah. Now there is a, hallelujah, that's number two, the collection for the Jewish saints, 2 Corinthians, and that is found in 9, chapter 9, verse 1 through 5. Now, there's a law, I'm going to get to the grace part. The grace part is good too, hallelujah. But I don't know why the Lord put two things like this together at the same time, but he knows what he's doing, and I'm going to preach it like he told me to preach it. Hallelujah. There's a law which is called the law of action and the law of reaction. Amen. Understand that? And this is found in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 11. And he said, But this I say, He that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he that soweth bountifully, hallelujah, shall reap also bountifully. Hallelujah. If we give a lot, we will receive a lot. If we give nothing, we receive nothing. <laughs> it's called the law of action and reaction. So if we could get this across to people that are giving or have the ability to give, don't hold back on your blessing that you want to bless somebody else with. Amen. Because if you bless them, the law will reverse and bless you back. Hallelujah. For what you gave to them. Hallelujah. And every man, as he purposed in his heart, let him give. Not grudgingly, oh, they don't deserve this. We're out of necessity. Everybody else is given, so I think I'm going to give too. For God loveth. <laughs> Who loves the cheerful givers? God does. God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is able to make grace abound toward you that ye always having sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. That's verse 8. God's grace and his favor toward you will always have all the sufficiency in all things, everything you need naturally and spiritually will come because you are a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. You will get things that you didn't expect. You will get checks in the mail. 
you will get somebody put something in your hand. Somebody will give you an envelope. So I don't deserve no envelope. Well, you must have deserved one because they gave you one. But God's amazing grace is, hallelujah, the same for all people. If you do not react in a positive way, you do not receive his amazing grace that he has in store for you. His favor can give you everything you need for your life. He can give you a house, a car, a job. He can bring money in your house. He can lay it on the heart of the government to give you a stimulus check. We're going to raise Social Security this year because the cost of living is so high. We're going to give you X number of dollars on your Social Security so you can have some more money. Well, what do I do? I take a 10% of it and give it back to the church. And if I see somebody that I really know needs something, I'm not going to say, go away, be warm and clothed. Hallelujah. But if I give my natural substance to them, God will give his grace, his amazing grace to me. I'm giving out natural things, but I'm receiving spiritual things. If you want to prosper in the Lord, if you want God's favor, if you want God to shower down on you the benefits that he has in store, even now, which we have never received yet. Share what you have with somebody else. Don't let them have to beg you to help them. Hallelujah. The saints should be the ones that is helping everybody to make it. Hallelujah. If you need a loaf of bread, I'll buy it for you. If you need somebody to take you to the doctor, I'll put you in my car and take you. God said when I saw what they did. I'm going to give them some more amazing grace. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, this is a funny message. But it's true. You can't beat God giving no matter how you try. Because the more you give, the more he gives to you. Hallelujah. You can't beat him giving. He sees what we do. The liberal soul shall be made fat. I ain't talking about extra calories. I'm talking about grace. Everybody else is laid off and I'm still working. Everybody else is on unemployment and I still got a job. How did you get a job when everybody else is on unemployment? God did it. God did it. I said God did it. How could you have money to buy food and everybody else doesn't have it? God did it. If we sow sparingly, we're going to reap sparingly. If we sow bountifully, we're going to reap bountifully. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's able to give us grace. He's able to provide for our every need. Hallelujah. David said, this is not on live streaming, but David said, I once was young. But now, I'm old. David said, I have never, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, and I have never seen them begging somebody for bread. Hallelujah. Maybe they didn't need steak all the time. Maybe they didn't have filet mignon. Hallelujah. Maybe they didn't have nothing but hot dogs and hamburgers. But they ate every day. Maybe all they had was a big sack of potatoes. And they had french fries. And they had cream potatoes. And they had potatoes with cheese. Potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. That's all we got is potatoes. Well, lift your hands and thank God for potatoes. Because <laughs> you wouldn't got nothing to eat if you didn't have some potatoes. <laughs> Hallelujah. This works. And I hope I can get it over today without seeing poking into people's business so much, but the grace that we receive from God, nobody pays for it. It's free. It's free. Did you ever get a bill in the mail from the Lord that said, you owe me $2,000 for my grace? But did you get some grace every day? He woke me up this morning, clothed in my right mind. I have the activity of my limbs. I have health and strength. I have a car to ride in. I have gas for my car. All my needs have been provided by God himself. Everything you have that's sitting here and in the live streaming, God gave it to you. If he had not gave it to you, you wouldn't have nothing. Hallelujah. David said, I'm an old man now, but I've never seen the Lord forsake his people. I never... According to the law of action and reaction, I've never seen it fail. If you give with your left hand, you will receive with your right hand. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I find no fault in him. I said, I find no fault in him. Not only did he give me and you and all of us salvation, but he takes extremely good care of his people. We all know you prayed for some things and you got it. You didn't get no bill in the mail for the healing that he gave you. You didn't get a bill in the mail for that tumor that went away. You didn't get a bill in the mail for some sickness that you had. 
the prayer of faith saved the sick and God raised him up and his grace raised us one more time said glorify me tell them how good I am tell them how wonderful I am if it had not been for me you wouldn't be healed if it wasn't for me you wouldn't have no money if it wasn't for me you wouldn't even be here God's grace, God's grace, God's grace, God's amazing grace, hallelujah, it's unspeakable, I said it's unspeakable, hallelujah. I'm almost done. I'm almost finished. When I think of his grace, I get excited. So oh, God just did that. No, he don't have to do anything. Nothing. He's sovereign. If he holds back our breath, we die. If he makes us lose our job, your money is gone. But he just keeps on, keeps on doing great things for us. Every time I turn around, he's blessing me. Every time I look behind, he's blessing me. Why are you so good, Lord? Why are you so wonderful, Lord? It's because I love my people so much. I've got to take care of them. I've got to keep them well. If they get sick, I have to heal them unless it's a sickness unto death. Because they are my people. Hallelujah. In my conclusion, we owe you something, Lord. We owe you a praise. We owe you a gladness and joy for the things that you have already done. Paul said, give thanks to God for his unspeakable gift. Now, I like words, and this is in my conclusion. You probably won't be able to write all of this down. But he is saying in those few words of our text that number one, God's grace is unspeakable. Now if you look in Strong's Concordance, this number, uh, Greek number 411, it says it is not expondent expounded in full. That's the meaning of unspeakable. And there is no way to completely have enough words in your vocabulary and in my vocabulary to speak 
in full about grace. We don't have them. And in the King James Version, the New King James Version, it is uh, said, instead of unspeakable, it said it is indescribable. Hallelujah. Now what that means is, hallelujah, it is identical with unspeakable. Unspeakable, you don't have enough words to, to, uh, to tell it. If I would ask you individually, what has grace done for you? You would be talking all day. I think you would anyway. Especially if you've been saved 20 or 30 years, you know what I mean? But there's no way to expound on it fully. It is inestimable. E-N-I-N-E-S-T-I-M-A-B-L-E. -E -E and that means it's incapable of being estimated. Grace. You can't estimate it. You can't put no value on it because it is so high they don't have that many numbers in our vocabulary. <laughs> Hallelujah. Indescribable means it, we're not able to represent it in words. We say, well, what did grace do for you? Blah, 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 blah. What were you trying to say? I can't say it because it won't come out. God's grace causes us to stand in awe of Him. We are speechless. We do not have an abundance or the favor of God, so that we can put the favor of God into words. It is incomparable. It's not able to show different levels of His grace, or of its quality, or of its quantity, or of its relationship. Hallelujah. And that's why number five, it is in inexpressible which means we are not able to express it and make it known in our vocabulary or words. Romans 5 and 20b said, but where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give thanks to God Today, for his amazing grace, which came through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he saved us from the penalty of sin, which is eternal judgment in the fires of hell. We do not have to go to hell. We do not have to go to hell because we have eternal life in His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Last scripture. Finally, finally, hallelujah, is 1 John 5 and 11 through 13. It said, This is the record that God had given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. These things 
have I written unto you that ye believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe in the name of the Son of God. Romans 6, 23 said, Hallelujah. The wages of sin is death. Hallelujah. I want to read it instead of quote it. Because it doesn't come to me exactly the way it is, and I want to give you exactly what it says. Romans 6.23 said, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. May the Lord bless you. May he look down upon us. May he help us. May he take the feeble words that I have said and put them in your heart and bring forth the fruit that he wants from this message. I have tried it. Maybe you have to. I've tried to not keep everything that God blesses me with for myself. Amen. And somebody said to me one time, well, I worked hard for this, and I've had to do without some things for this, so this belonged to me. But I always saw the tithes, especially the tithes, come into the church. I never saw an argument between you and God about whether you owed him tithes or not. Because he said the tithes was his anyway. He said, bring all of your tithes and offerings in the storehouse and prove me herewith. See, if I don't open up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing so large, you won't have room to receive. And I hate to hear saints, well, I can't afford to give my tithe. You can't afford not to give them. Well, I ain't, I ain't got enough money for offering. Well, if you got one dollar, that's an offering. Offerings are based on what you got, not what you don't have. All right? But you take care of God's house. Take care of his work. And I'm saying this to the live streaming audience too. If you ain't giving time, you need to give some time. 10% of your gross income belongs to the Lord. And you got grace to get that job. And you got grace to bring that paycheck home because of God. <laughs> Amen. You can get quiet. I, I, won't, I won't bother me none. <laughs> but bless the Lord and he will bless you. Bless other people and he will bless you. Because of the law of action and reaction. Press down, shaken together, running over. Will he give into your bosom? That's what he said in Luke 6 and 38. Amen? All right. St do you still, everything okay? You still, okay. Am I still all right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless all of you and have a smile upon you as our prayer.